privilege today of announcing announcing our speaker. Um, I, I have I met Laura um, De Benedetto in Frank Agin's group, the networking hub. If you guys aren't familiar with that group, reach out to Frank seriously. It's it's awesome. It's like shared connections once a month at a different time in the evenings. Uh, it's fantastic. But I met Laura there. We had a fantastic conversation, uh, which has now been multiple conversations. I've gotten to meet her husband now uh, and had a wonderful conversation with him as well. The things that they are doing, they're just great people doing wonderful things. Um, and, and I'm just grateful to know them. And, you know, that, that's what means a lot to me. She's, she's got a lot of. And he's frozen. Conversations. And it's the things that are talked about, uh, you know, and, and she's just real, uh, which, which I really respect and I really like about her. Um, a little bit of uh, official is she's a TEDx speaker. She's the number one best-selling author. Oh, am I glitchy or am I okay? My internet's a little crazy today. All right. So she's a, a TEDx speaker, uh, number one best-selling author of the Six Habits and Life Mastery Coach, uh, Laura D. Benedict. She's a creator of our dreams without sacrificing what we love. Um, and then just a fun fact too, I'll throw in there too. Uh, she was named 40 under 40 and she won that at age 23. How cool is that? So, uh, listen, without further ado, I just want to hear her presentation and give her the stage. So Laura, thank you for being here. Stage is yours. Thanks. Hey everybody. It's funny. I don't know if, uh, anybody actually heard that marvelous introduction just because of all the tech stuff, <laughs> but Hey, give me a thumbs up. If you actually heard it, do you have any vague idea of who I am? Nice. I heard it. Okay. <laughs> So my goal is for the next 19 and a half minutes for us to have some fun, learn some things. And uh, I would like for this to be the high point of your day. So I'm gonna share some really powerful wisdom with you. Uh, I will encourage you to take notes if you like. If you hate learning, then you should probably block your ears because I'm about to drop some knowledge on you. So I'm gonna start off by telling you what we're talking about today. The role of self-mastery in entrepreneurship. So. Entrepreneurship is one of my favorite subjects and I could go on and on and on about that endlessly, but I won't. What we're gonna talk about is the role of self-mastery within it and how important it is. And I'm gonna begin this by telling you about 10 ways not mastering myself screwed me over. Who's excited to learn about me victimizing myself? It's gonna be a blast. All right, number one. And you know what, because audience participation is fun and I'm not actually on a stage, it'd be fun if we could do like Actual hands up if you can relate to what I have said. Number one, when I was out there doing selling stuff, I did not actually believe that I was worth high prices. So I never asked for the big deals or negotiated effectively. Who can relate? You left money on the table. So yeah, it sucks. So when you, when you do that, you know, you, uh, you're living in this circumstance where you're like, oh, I don't know if I can go after that. Really? That guy charges so much. And you make a lot of negative value judgments about what you believe you should be paid. And I did that. I played small. I left money on the table. I did not negotiate effectively. I lost a lot of money. Number two, let's see who agrees with this one. I let clients take advantage of me in client, in uh, scope creep. And with disputes, I never fought, fought back enough or at all. Show of hands, who can relate to that? Yep. Okay, so that's pretty terrible. Ever, you know, somebody's like, oh, so the flat fee is like, oh, five thousand dollars. Can you just, can, can you just add, can, can you just, it's always with the just. And then it's like, actually, the scope is expanding, but the bill is not. And you know what happens when we do not master ourselves, that ushers that particular situation in. <clears throat> Number three, has anyone in this room ever sold anything and related to the following? Although I knew when prospects were lying about, thinking it over because I knew damn well they were saying no to me. I never called them on it. I lost the sale for sure instead of taking a swing for the fences and getting a maybe. Anyone ever do that? Okay, there's some honest people here. I respect that. <laughs> All right, so that is a reflection of how you feel about yourself and your self-worth. Not self-mastering means you're gonna let people lie right to your face and you're gonna be like, okay, I'll call you in two weeks and follow up and you get walked on and you lose sales, you lose money. Number four, I bought into predatory schemes and believed in the wrong people. And I lost a ton of money because I kept falling further and further behind because of my choices. Anyone get do that one? Yup, honest people, I love it. So this one might be gender specific, 
but I did not advocate for myself when the good old boys club or established cliques in business left me out. I sulked away. Ladies, can anyone appreciate this? There's a lot of business cliques out there. I remember there was a restaurant association in Massachusetts that gave me the cold shoulder and I didn't fight as hard as I could have. And guess what? If I had mastered myself, I would have with grace and class. Now, number six, I let my emotions get the best of me and I was a terrible boss. Good or bad, my emotions were all over the place and leaking all over my team. How disgusting is that? Ugh. Anyone relate? I was a terrible boss. I was the dragon lady. It was not a good environment and I cycled through teams. And you know what happens when you cycle through your employees? They hate you and the cost of uh, re replacing them is actually very high and you end up getting just exhausted and stressed out. Whereas if you master yourself, you can save a ton of money by just keeping your staff because they want to stay because they like you and they like your job. <clears throat> Number seven, I was a gigantic stress ball and I ended up developing physical manifestations of stress that I'm actually still working on manifesting today. Anyone ever go through that? What you can experience with stress and what it does to your body. Did you know that stress can actually cause you to have perforated gut, leaky gut. You can have um, your intestinal juices leaking into your bloodstream and it can slowly kill you. When they say stress is the silent killer, it really is. And I have all the medical tests to prove it. I was in the emergency room and I was really in rough shape. There was a couple of years there where I really thought I was going to die. All because of stress, because I did not master myself. Now, number eight, I had no boundaries with my time and my first marriage suffered. And my second one, which I am joyfully in now, almost did. Anyone ever put their work before their sweetheart? Ever? Yep. Thank you for your honesty. When you master yourself, you have good boundaries and you honor your priorities. And we're gonna talk a lot about solutions in a minute. So I got two more left and maybe we'll see if we can relate to these. If you're keeping score, I did 10 out of 10 of these. I'll be interested to see if you got 10. Number nine, I made a lot less than I could have. I want you to think in the millions. Uh, deals lost, money left on the table, shots not taken and losing bids, et cetera. I just didn't fight hard enough because I didn't believe in myself enough. I didn't work on myself. I didn't work on my confidence, my ability to speak publicly, to advocate for myself, um, to actually crush my goals effectively. The thing about self-mastery is it's not all the hippy dippy, like feel good stuff. It's not all the warm and fuzzy self-help books. It's not about that. It's not just mindset. It's everything. You have to learn how to think. Now, number nine, when I retired at the tender age of 38, instead of being proud and joyful, I was ashamed and I was exhausted. I was not excited for the next chapter. I was excited to skid to the finish line on my face. Why'd that happen? Because of stress. I didn't enjoy the ride. I did it to myself all because I did not master myself. So just show of hands, just to have some fun here. Who in this room got 10 out of 10? Obviously me. Anybody, nine out of 10? Okay, I'm scrolling through. Well. That's a lot. If you were in the even the top 50% of that, you have felt the sting of not mastering yourself. And there's reason for you to pay attention to what I'm about to say. Here's what self mastery looks like. I'm going to give you six specific things that you can write down. Number one, you're going to know your value. When you master yourself, you'll know your worth. You'll negotiate with power. You'll walk away with, from bad deals to make room for good ones. Never again will you feel the sting of desperation of, oh shit, I need that sale. No, you don't. You'll know. You'll ask for more money. You'll get it. You'll negotiate with clarity and purpose and get respect because you deserve it, because you give it to yourself. And you will never be crapped on by your clients again because you simply won't allow it. Number two, self-mastery looks like clarity. You will be clear about what you want. And most importantly, why you want it. If you're not clear about why you want the stuff you want, it's not gonna come into place. It's just not. When you are abundantly clear about exactly who you are, what you want, why you want it, your motivating factors are gonna kick you in the ass so hard, they're gonna make you get up and go get it. And that's what self-mastery is. It's not someone else winding up your crank, it's you doing it every day. You wind your crank and off you go. 
You're almost like a little wind up toy, right? Like you need to be the one motivating yourself. And self mastery means you're in charge of you and you get to crush things without an external motivator. It is intrinsic. So you don't need to worry about like, oh, what's going on in the news or my husband wasn't nice or my wife wasn't nice or my business parts, it doesn't matter because it comes from inside and you are an unlimited resource for yourself. Self-mastery looks like number three, integrity. Integrity is a very vital point here. Integrity is something that is one of my deepest core values. I talk about it a lot. This means that you're treating yourself your vendors, your clients, and your team with class and grace. So you can be the best, richest you possible. The more you treat them like gold, the more they will help you to find gold. Integrity is easy. It is effortless to do the right thing and to do the right thing by people when you do it right by you first. Integrity comes about from self-mastery. Number four, tranquility. You're going to enjoy the ride, even on bad days, because you will have an emotional detachment free of the emotional roller coaster, and you'll be able to make objective, good, um, substantial decisions that work out for you versus things based on a knee jerk response. Five, and uh, energy. When you live in a place of total self mastery, you're not tired all the time because you have good boundaries. You know what to invest your time in. You know what not to invest it in, what to say yes with, what to say no with. You manage your energy really well. And you know what this means? You feel fulfillment and joy and fun in what you do. I don't know about you, but I don't work. I have fun and I happen to get paid for it. And friends, that's the way it should be. Like if you hate what you do and you're like, oh, that shit again, you're going to be poor and broke and pissed off the whole time. Wouldn't you rather enjoy the ride? I would. So number six, efficiency. You are going to accomplish substantially more than you previously could in a fraction of the time when you master yourself, because you will no longer be caught up in the minutia. You will know how to powerfully say no to things that are worthy of saying no. You will say no to crap. You'll say no to things that people position as an emergency that really are not an emergency. And you'll be the master of your own time and therefore you will be hyper efficient, which means you will achieve more with less time and effort. So these are six things. These are the words again, in case you didn't write them all down. Value, clarity, integrity, tranquility, energy, and efficiency. And these are the six ways that you will improve if you go down the road of self-mastery. So how do we do this? Let's move on to that. So mastering yourself means mastering your thoughts. Why is that? Thoughts become words. Words become actions. Actions become habits. And habits create our lives. This is true if you think about this in your life. And I'll say this again in case you feel like writing it down. Thoughts become words. Words become actions. Actions become habits. And habits create our lives. Our lives are a reflection of the habits we have. So if you master your mental habits, you master your life because thoughts become things, et cetera. So here's how we begin. You need to carefully examine a couple key areas. And again, I'm gonna encourage you to write these down. Number one, I want you to examine how do you treat yourself? Ask yourself that question in detail. detail. Sit there with a bottle of whiskey if you have to, get the feelings out somehow. And you do need your feelings to come out. This can't be some like perfunctory robotic experience. You need to actually have a come to Jesus moment. And if you treat yourself like shit, you need to own that lean into it because that's how you stop doing that. And that's the power of truth. So number one, how do you treat yourself? Number two, how do you feel about yourself? Might need to talk to someone about this. Talk to your mom, talk to your therapist, write it down, a bottle of something, smoke a fatty, whatever it takes, get the feelings out. You have to be honest. This is such an important, important thing that determines how your life goes. How do you feel about yourself? And where's that coming from? If you don't know how you feel about yourself, you have no idea how hard it's going to be for you to get where you want to go. It's going to be like rolling a stone up a hill for the rest of your life. So that's question number one, how do you treat yourself? And question number two, how do you feel about yourself? Number three, how do you feel about your life? Good, bad, ugly, all the in-between moments, the little moments in the cracks. How do you feel about all that? How do you feel about the way you look? How do you think about your... Um, 
Hey, I love that. Think and grow rich. How about read my book? Thanks for pitching somebody else's. <laughs> so it is a great book. I love it. So question number four is how do you show up in your life? How are you showing up when things get rough? What's that look like for you? Do you show up with your best self? Do you whine about it? Do you complain? Do you just mm, poor me? Or do you feel like you can totally, totally handle it, right? How do you show up? And do you feel your moments? Do you live your moments? Are you checked out? Number five, how do you invite energy in? And how do you put your energy out? Very, very powerful question. Self-inquiry is the number one thing that I work with my coaching clients on. So I work with coaches and I work with individuals, a lot of business leaders. And guess what? It's not the business stuff that holds people back. It's this stuff. This is what I get paid thousands and thousands of dollars to teach is how to essentially unscramble your head because this is all the stuff that holds you back. So I ask my clients, these big corporate to do's, you know, how do you invite energy in and put energy out? And it invites big discussion. And believe me, it's a fight because the, the harder they, you know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Nobody likes to talk about their feelings and nobody likes to acknowledge their weaknesses, which is why you get to do this in a journal all by yourself. And you get to be honest with just you and that's it. You don't have to tell me, you don't have to tell anyone else in this room. So question number six, how do you manage your time and how do you manage your dreams? How do you do that? Are you just a multitasker? I'm gonna give you a secret. There's no such thing as multitasking. It's a lie. You're basically sucking at multiple things at once. The only thing, I'm, listen, this is a little crass, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. The only multitasking is answering emails while you're sitting on the toilet. That, my friend, is multitasking. Other than that, you're not doing it. You're lying to yourself. So how do you manage your time and your dreams? Are they as important as you say they are? Do you prioritize them? Do you prioritize your time to actually prove that that thing you said you want, you're gonna have? Do you do that? Go through these six questions and get real with yourself. Not mean, not diet real, I mean real, full fat real, right? How do you treat yourself? How do you feel about yourself? How do you feel about your life? How do you, how do you show up in your life? How do you invite energy in and put energy out? And how do you manage your time and your dreams? For more on those specific inquiries, there's a handy dandy copy of my book, The Six Habits. <clears throat> I'm slightly biased, I think it's really good. <laughs> now what happens after mastery? There's a really important benefit that happens through mastery. And I gave you 10 really crappy things that I did to derail myself, screw myself over and suffer and be poorer for it. But now I'm gonna give you the other side of what happened after. 10 things. Number one, I learned my incredible value and I 10X my negotiation skills. I never left money on the table ever again. And to me, talking about money is easy and fun. Uh, so much so that I make it easy and fun for the other person to talk about because I have no issues with talking about it and it's a great subject. I'm paid well and I love what I do. And I don't feel like I'm taking advantage of because I'm not. So number two, I do not at all get taken advantage of and I have complete full comfort saying no. And I do often. You know what that means? I get to say yes to other things because I've left room for the right things to come in because I've only allowed good things to come in the door. Number three, I have fun in the sales process. I mean, genuine fun. I'm a better consultant and coach for it. And I call people on their lies and we get real honest, real fast. And deals happen often. And you know what? Sometimes I'm not the right person for them. And I tell them that and that feels really good. And I like that. That's the great thing about high integrity selling is when you can send someone on their way, but you help them to buy correctly, even if it's not from you. Number four. I continue to advance harder and faster because I am not falling victim to anyone ever. Self-mastery means I'm nobody's victim. I am in charge of me. I am responsible for making sure I'm not naive. Once upon a time, you'd look up naive in the dictionary and there I was, not anymore. Number five, good old boys club? I don't think so. I'm sure there is one out there, but I just said, hey, screw it. So I built my own. And now awesome people of all walks of life and all business credos can come and join my club because I'm very inclusive. And now I'm having fun because it's on my terms and I'm not some elitist bitch. And that feels awesome. <laughs> Number six, I am cool headed and balanced and I make solid rational decisions that work out for me. I do not rush. I do not do things on anyone's timeline except my own. And I live by the mantra, 
uh, your failure to plan does not make it an emergency for me. So I do things on my timeline. And if I need three weeks to think it over, I need three weeks to think it over. I do not rush. And I am tranquil and living in the stillness. <clears throat> Number seven, my body is healing. Remember how I said I was really sick, I was in the hospital and all that stuff? Well, my body is healing. It's a process. You know, I'm going the route of natural medicine. I am healthy, though. I am very happy. I sleep really well. I wouldn't say I sleep like a baby because they don't sleep real well. I sleep like the dead, and that's awesome. And my body is a very happy home. Number eight, I have hard boundaries with my time. Hard boundaries. And my marriage is very happy and very fulfilling and very respectful, which is the way it should be. Number nine, money comes freely and easily to me. And now I get to share that magic with others through my book, my second company, and my consulting. And finally, number 10, I reclaimed and redefined my retirement. And I am filled with pride, joy, and so much energy for serving others and helping them to not make the same mistakes. So your first steps to achieve all the good stuff, not in the before yucky pile, but in the after, the awesome pile of good, good, good results. Here's what you need to do. Three things. One, you need to get super honest with yourself. I said that before, I can't emphasize it enough. You gotta get super honest with yourself and you need to dig deep, plumb the depths of how you, again, how you treat yourself, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about your life, how you show up in your life, how you invite energy in and out and how you manage your time and your dreams. Those six specific questions are really critical. So you gotta do this. Might take you a couple days, might take you a couple months. There is no timeline for what works for you. Allow it to unfold exactly as it should. Number two, you need to be your own attorney. What this means is you need to pretend you're standing up in your own little fictitious courtroom in your head and you need to stand up and make a case for yourself, okay? This means you have got to see why and how you benefit or you won't get off the couch. You need to advocate and be like, listen, I really wanna work on myself, self, because I'm gonna get this, this, and this out of it. You need to see the gap between where you are and where you wanna go. And you have to make the case for yourself. Could be timeshare salesman, car salesman, high integrity salesperson, or you know, an attorney, whatever you want. I always like to have a little attorney in my head with a little baby briefcase and all these things, but I like that. Someone willing to fight for me. I am willing to fight for me, and I want you to be willing to fight for you. You have to make a case for yourself my life is here. It could be here. And if I do these things that are uncomfortable and icky, I'm going to get this. And I want that. And it is absolutely insufferable for me to think of not having that for one more minute. So I'm going to get off my ass right now, not tomorrow, right now. And I'm going to get these things in my life and I'm going to change and master my thoughts. And then number three, finally, the very last thing I will leave you with. You need to change your thoughts little at a time every day through continual hyper self-awareness and keeping your goals front and center. When you're asking all these self-inquiry questions, you're going to get some answers you don't like. That's the point. You're going to see what you want instead. If you see, oh my God, I treat myself like crap. I say mean things or, you know, I never forgave myself for that thing I did 10 years ago and I've just been living in the shame of that ever since. You know the opposite of that feeling that you're currently living in. Go towards the thing you want by continual hyper self-awareness and keeping your goals of what you want and who you want to be front and center. And I promise you, my friends, you will be richer, happier, and healthier for it. Thank you.